Right. Six o'clock, we'll call this meeting to order. Uh, Joel did call and it, we actually wrote and said he'd be gone today, so he's excused. If we'll all stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Does everyone have a chance to review the agenda? I'll second. No questions, no comments. All in favor, aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, public comments will be for anyone wishing to address the council for matters not on the agenda. Donna, are you speaking? Anybody else speaking at this moment? You know our rules. I won't read it. You've got a few minutes. I've memorized I'm glad you have. Uh, I just want to compliment the city. Uh, I've been with the doctor twice now at Wichita, and we had all of our streets clean from the ice and the snow, and I got to Eureka, and it slid all over. Then I got to Eldorado, and it was worse. And I thought, I need to tell thank you to the city that you do that. Thank you, Donna. Consent agenda. Any questions regarding the consent agenda? I have a question um, on the minutes for the last meeting on page four. Item number four. Mark caught it earlier and emailed me, so I fixed it. So. Okay. Steve so I didn't, I didn't notice in time to call you. Yes. So you figured out who the motion yes. was made by? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Steve has the correct now. Thank you. Any other questions? Can we have a motion? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. New business. I didn't see Mike today, but I guess I can take that. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, I'll, I'll jump in here. Yeah, we were expecting some staff members to be here, and apparently they are not. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think the water tower one I can take. The other one, that's. Uh, <laughs> I, I can give it to you about the <laughs> okay, watch. <well, I'm laughs> uh, oh, oh. Wait a minute. Look at the cat drug is. Come on up, it's your turn. Really? You're late. You're late. <laughs> Going on first. 69 Project, KV Pro. Sorry about that. Hi, Mike. Hello. <clears throat> well, the poll replacement project's moving forward. We got the polls in today. You folks uh, signed off on the uh, from Lambert Wood Systems back on 11 22 of 2021. This would be for the installation of them. And we had sent out five bids, and we got the three here that's in front of you on your papers. And looks like PAR, which was the ones that put them in originally, would be the one we would recommend for the project. Excuse me? 145000 to 290000 Well, the best we can figure is the mobilization of the two. That one's in Wisconsin. Of course, the other one's in Nebraska. And PAR's mm -hmm. right here locally. They do a lot of business right here, you know, in this area anyways. Be my best guess. No wind chill time, or yeah. Well, I, I know there's a gallon that's expensive. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I think they have a crew working here pretty close right now. <laughs> yeah. My guess is this is a pretty small project for them. Yeah, they they're going to shirt tail it in. I think they got a crew over around, I don't know, maybe Eureka or somewhere doing some pole work for uh, Average U over there, too. When they install the poles, does that include hanging the lines or do we? Yes. That, we might be a little bit of some, uh, connectors we might have to purchase later to do this. And, of course, the crane rental for us getting them offloaded off the trucks will be in, in this project here, too. But for the most part, everything will be just swap, swap them out and put right back. Any questions? Will there be areas of town that are without power for a while? No. The only thing that might be without power for just a little bit would be the main sewer plant, and we're going to try to work around it and maybe cut it to a minimum of two hours. To that's what Mitch is telling me they can maybe have it off before they have to kick the pumps back on. But I'm hoping we can work around it and maybe just have a short moment. But no, no services will be out in town. 
I'd move to accept a little bit from PAR Electrical Incorporated in the amount of $145,000 and authorized staff to execute the necessary documents for the project. Second. Motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 Everyone opposed? Thank you. EMD control. This year would be for the upgrade of the, basically the PLC, the computer, and the operating systems on the five EMDs we have. We initially put this operating system in, in started in 2008 and wrapped it up in 2011. And as everybody knows, that's quite a span for basically computers and machines. And they've, since then they've been, basically they're obsoleted. They're taking them out of service, they're not supported no more. So. <clears throat> These will bring them back up into where we can get service and support for our controls on the EMDs. And the reason it's proprietary is uh, Carl caught me and asked me this, and that was a good question for Carl. I knew it'd come from Carl too. <laughs> is not everything that when we did the original uh, initial upgrade, <clears throat> there was a lot more. Of the components had to be changed out, <clears throat> basically like the computer part and the server parts on the engines. <clears throat> Then parts basically consist of the voltage regulator, governor control, rectifier <coughs> controls, sink check controllers, and louver controls are not being replaced. They're still supported, so we don't have to <coughs> replace any of that right now. And they're telling me they'll be supported for some time. It's just the, basically the PLC parts of it. <coughs> and like I say, it has to, <coughs> through Peaker because they're the ones that puts the programming and everything whatnot in, and they have to match up with what's in service already. This letter that we have from Peeker is dated February 21. Is that a flu? I got one from, well, that's, when I, I started on this like five years ago. No, actually I got one from March 4th. It didn't get updated when we did the, the, for the packet for everybody, but I've got one from March 4th, which, but the current price on the agenda item is uh, reflective of the March 4th quotes. On page two of this letter, it says install a used uh, transformer on unit eight and nine is that still part of the work project yes that will be for the black start part of it it's basically it's just a it, whether you got new or used either way it's just a transformer in there that's just replaceable products in there but uh, it'd be the cheapest ways to put the used one in there we got used ones in on the other two units as well so they don't they have to be supplying the used or do we have them in stock no they will supply them is that yes. a good price thirty thousand each for used <coughs> Yeah, on our buying pair. Uh, yeah, because they're actually they're specific for this Black Star unit for this application, so they kind of got to be molded for that right there. Okay. Do you used have a warning? Huh? Do you used have a warning? <clears throat> I don't believe they do, but we burnt one up the last time when they put one in relatively pretty quick afterwards, and they came down and stuck one in for us for nothing last time. So they've been real good to work with after the sale. I can't have no complaints, and I'm not saying that'll happen again, but the last time we did, they were down within six months and put us a new transformer in at no cost. <coughs> well, I'd almost venture to say it's probably going to be about double. Okay. Yeah especially with the price of copper and everything what now because these will be copper wound yeah uh, describe to me <clears throat> like the um, your black start capability does it uh, is that a uh, a generator another motor uh, <clears throat> that's what the transformers do <clears throat> for you to bring a generator online you got to match voltage and these transformers set off to the side, and when you flip the switches a certain way to the black start mode, it basically teases the generator to think there's actually voltage out there to it's seeing, so it can match something for the breaker to close. That's basically what it does, but just so the, basically the generator thinks there's bus voltage out there, so the breaker closes. And it has to give it a signal otherwise, because there is no signal from uh, Evergy when there's a, a black start situation. I know you've done business with Peaker before, but one of the challenges I see in this is 
such a large amount with no competing bid. Do you have any idea from other cities uh, if they've done similar work with other companies to give an idea if their prices are competitive? Uh, would be old quotes call when I did it. Like I said, some of these have got to match up and compatible with what we got. I can give you the numbers from when we did the initials to let you kind of an idea. When we put the original controls in, it was about $700,000. That was when we put the, the PLCs plus the controls on the unit. So basically it's about half price just to put the computers on now because we're not replacing everything. I'm afraid if we went with somebody else, we'd have to match their system. And some of these controls that I mentioned that's not being changed out would have to be changed out. They wouldn't be compatible with the operating system that would be from another vendor. Okay, so this is for five EMDs. All five of them. Um, so it does not, let's see, do we? You have three outside at Bassett, two inside? No, three, at, uh, three at Bassett and two at the plant. <clears throat> I'm going to put a, a black start on the two at Bassett. There's the third one out there, but it's got a different <clears throat> different generator on it. It's kind of like a brushless type. It'd be uh, about four times as high to put one on out there, so I'm just going to put it on the two that's similar to the ones at the plant. And two's better than none out there after last February, so that's why I just stuck it on the figure on eight and nine. 10 can have it done, but it'd be uh, quite a bit more expensive for that particular unit. It's a little bit of an odd unit. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Any other questions? <clears throat> we have a motion. I make a motion to accept the proprietary bid from Peaker Services in the amount of 543500 and authorize staff to execute the necessary documents for the project. Second. Might make a note too that this did come in under bid, so that's always a good thing to see. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, folks. You bet. Thank you, Mike. <coughs> Oak Street Water Tower. <coughs> Okay, this is for the Oak Street Water Tower Rehab Project, which can, is a lot more than painting. I have, we've got a list of, it's in pretty bad shape that needs some issues addressed. Uh, we started this in, I think, 17 or 18. I've been trying to get this painted, so I've been going down the road, and finally we got the money. I thought we did. We budgeted 250000 uh, The bid came in at 290640 which the way everything else would cost and everything, I talked to tire people and they said everything went up 20%. So that would have put it at 300000 So, we, I mean, it, it is what it is. I sent out four bids. Uh, I received two of them. Viking Industrial Paint out of Heston was $290,640. And the other one I got from TMI Coatings in St. Paul was $442,000. So basically $150,000 difference. So we know anything about Viking? Yeah, they're real Pretty good. They, yeah, they're part of KRWA. And I've talked to other towns that have used them. And they're, they're a, a good one. Toby, when we submit an RFP for stuff like this, do we do we put in that the type of medium sealant paint or do we rely on them to tell us what they have i got with tenemic which tenemic is the number i mean that's why everybody paints their tires that's like the cadillac of paint and i got i had them come down and they take a paint sample and use a little gizmo to see how many mills of paint there are and then they go and write a recommendation so that's where the that's where that came there's tenemic sherman williams and I mean, but Tanee makes the number one, so we, I went with them. That includes to me that, that company. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Would this be blasting the whole paint off? And Power washed, because underneath all of this is lead paint. So if we get to blasting, then we get into lead abatement, and it gets, this triples. They do an inspection on the tower while they're there? Or? Oh, yeah, it'll be all down. They got some work to do. They're, they got to replace the roof vent. The ladders, I got some work on. The safety harnesses. I mean, there's there's quite a bit of 
stuff that needs done to it. This isn't just painting. Yeah, Mark, good way to put it. This is basically a a, a needed project. That, that's why we I changed the word to uh, um, rehabilitation as opposed to painting because it's a lot more than that. And the the stuff on the outside, um, you, you can see the issues, but um, there there there's rusting on the inside. I mean, this is something that needs to be done. I yeah. Minnesota. This one's out of Heston. Well, their their main company is out of there, and this is a branch of it. Mm -hmm. it also, they have a uh, what do you want to call a preventive maintenance program that you can sign up for. They have yes, and that's something that I'm thinking about. Once we get this done, and then maybe go because then instead of having to come up with two hundred ninety six thousand or two hundred ninety thousand, it's 10,000 a year, 20,000 a year, and it's every tower, because we have three water towers. So that way, instead of having this big amount, it'd just be like a budget item, and then this next year, maybe Oak Street, or I mean, College Tower or something, paint it, or clean it, or do some maintenance on it. I mean, that way. Well, they have drones, and they also use uh, ones they can get oh, yeah, they the got tank and, and check them. Yeah, and yeah. So cause basically, on top of water tower, we have no idea what it looks like, or, yeah. anything, or in it until they Take sure pictures. Up there and tap along. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does this water tower have different uh, antennas and stuff on it by other companies? A and bunch. If I recall correctly, one of the agreements or some of the agreements, the companies have to be um, in charge of any expense to remove those to do our work. I don't remember that, but when they go to paint it, we need to get everything off there because there's no sense of trying to have the painters have my to paint around it and not get. It's, Quick it's calm. My... Now, some of Boyer's old stuff, that was a handshake agreement in the, gosh, probably the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, I'm guessing. Uh, but yeah, with Quick Calm and uh, Harry Lee's business, I think they both got stuff on there, don't they? Or Harry doesn't do it. No, Lee has it on, on the Gates. Too. Lee has it on Gates in college, and I think it's just Quick Calm on top of. So yeah, I mean, since, since we had a like a gentleman's agreement, they could use it. It should be at no expense to the city if it has to be removed. So we need to make sure we work with those companies that yeah, I'm sure some of that stuff we don't accrue any cost use anymore. Yeah, additional cost. But it'd be nice to have them come take it down. Exactly. With the cost of supplies and stuff, is this something that we could see the cost of price going, the cost of supplies going back down in the next four <laughs> to six months? No, I don't. No, I don't think so. I think if anything, it'll be the opposite. I think if anything, it'll go up. So, what was the reason for it? Because you said that you tried to do it in 2017. Just getting money and putting everything. It seems like something else come up, and we used. I mean, just been. Put it on the back Put burner. Put it back burner. Well, it can go another year. Well, it can go another year. Well, we're to the point where it, it no needs to, yeah. This, yes. this was also prior to water rate increases that yeah. will help fund this. I mean, right. the water fund was literally sucking air to pay the bond payment. We paid it out of capital projects one year. <clears throat> so, I mean, it was, it's now doing good. <clears throat> But this one's by far the worst shape of, the other two aren't that bad. Plus, they're stand pipes. They don't have the, this is the one just straight north of the tennis courts there at the high school. It's got all the, the big tank and it's got all the legs, so it takes a lot more to. All the vultures on it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I have a question. So, this was budgeted at 250000 It's coming in at 290 Matt, you haven't really said anything about that, but I'm assuming our budget can absorb yeah. this without. Yeah, water phone can absorb it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions? If not, can we get a motion? I make a motion to accept the low bid from Viking Industrial Painting uh, from Heston, Kansas, in the amount of $290,640. Second. And authorize staff to execute the necessary documents for the project. I'll go. Second. <laughs> motion and a second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks. Thank you. Passes. What's the time frame for this? Thank you, Toby. Toby, time frame. Toby, time frame <coughs> for them to do this work? Mm, uh, summer. I think it's a summer project. What was it? Yeah. In the summer. I think June 1st deadline to start date. If I yeah. Remember yeah, right. yeah, 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 June 1 start date. Summer, summer yeah. this time. Yeah. Okay. But they're also, I talked to both companies have been, they said, of course, everybody else, COVID last year, one of the crew. 
everything. Still being canceled. I think that's going to help. So, so. Hey, thanks. Yep. Thanks, Toby. You're welcome. Pop-up mm. prom event. Good evening, Council. Uh, Paul Porter and I are here this evening. We are representing Iola Pride, CITF. I'm not wearing my Thrive hat this evening. Again, Iola Pride, CITF. So we are asking the uh, Council's blessing to proceed with this pop-up prom event. Uh, we propose blocking off Jackson between the pocket park just west of City Hall over to the intersection of Jackson, Jackson and Washington. Um, it's a, we've branded it as a pop-up prom, all ages event, music, food, beverage, uh, culminating in a street dance with the Mildred Street Band uh, running about 5 to 10 p.m. Um, we do understand that there is concern that uh, the event associates alcohol consumption with Iola's prom. Uh, that's not our intent at all. The two events are not linked in any way. Um, so if we do need to make changes to the name, we are willing to do so. We don't want to cause any problems. We simply want to put on an event that's fun, it's uh, family oriented, uh, brings people out of all ages, and uh, something to do on the square, brings focus to the square, and, and celebrates that. So, uh, any questions? Um, are you married to that date since it's it coincides with Iola Prom? Would, have you considered another time so that you could eliminate some of that? When we well, our initial thought was since that is the night of of the prom, we you know you've got folks at the high school, parents uh, they may want to have you know a fun evening out and uh, just move their attention from this end of the street to this end of the street, and so um, that drove us initially. Now um, I feel like we're pretty we're set on the date. Um, it's the theme that we can tweak, if you will. I think it's cool. I think it's cool again. That's, I, I would definitely suggest the name change just because of the association with prom and increased teenage alcohol yeah. use. Um, and April being Alcohol Awareness Month. Just take the prom off. Yeah. That's that's honestly what I would suggest. Just to, I, we all know teenagers drink, but well, it's just. Yeah. Yeah. That was the thinking, you know, it's an adult prom. I mean, when you're 20s, 30s, 40s, you don't go to prom. So this is that adult angle to it. Um, but at the same time, you know, we don't want to, you know, I don't think the central focus of it, though, is the booze and alcohol. No, 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 no. no. I, never, I never said it was the central focus. No, I know. No. The connotation with prom and with alcohol and teenagers, which prom is normally for, just changing the word prom in the name that's that's all i am concerned with um because i know there's organizations in town in the county uh, that will be going working with the alcohol awareness um, but I, I, like him said it's something to do it i think it has potential to be a great event i like the idea except for the alcohol consumption we had alcohol beer gardens at farm city days and i don't see what the difference is Personally, <laughs> yeah, the, the beer garden will just be a little corner over there by the stage. Um, but the main event, I mean, 90% of the street is just going to be the dance. Uh, that's just another uh, aspect of the event that will, you know, hopefully make it sticky and give people something to do. And there is the prom association, and we picked that date specifically because, you know, prom is for the kids. But what does everybody else do while their kids are at prom? It seems like a natural thing to just. You know, everybody's going to be there for all the prom stuff. Just walk down the street two blocks. It's all right there. Everybody can have a great time on prom night. Um, we're working on the food stuff. Um, yeah. The main thing we're trying to do is just generate activity on the square. Um, my wife and I moved back here with the intent of making the square someplace that is constantly busy for the businesses and the residents and everybody. We want that square to be someplace that attracts people all the time for all kinds of events. Um, Am I understanding correctly that it, I understand the portion of the street you want to close, but did you want to go into the intersection as well? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, we're and that would be my concern because Washington is a main thoroughfare for our ambulances and, and fire trucks that need to go south. Yeah, um, I was actually thinking maybe we only block off half of Washington to allow at least one lane straight north south there, without you know having the stage too close to traffic and everything. There. So rather than going into Washington, why not go a little further past the park? Our initial thought was we were thinking backdrop, and so if we have a stage without a backdrop and you have traffic going through there, and it could be a distraction if somebody wanted it to be, but I mean, that if we needed to leave Washington open, we can do that. Yeah, that, that concerns me too because of the um, first responders. Are you going to need electric lights? Ramp for it? <clears throat> we didn't anticipate that, no, although. Yeah, that's, yeah, correct. Um, um, food trucks is one option, but we're trying to incorporate rookies more for the food because they're a business on the square. That's a natural fit for them. We want the business. I get them involved and to handle the food. Outsiders or no outsiders? <laughs> 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 no, maybe. Square. And yeah. as many businesses as we can, you know, involve in the square. I mean, it's a win. Um, I think Donna wanted to make a comment. Oh. Yeah. I just got to say this. Uh, I'm in CITF, as all of you know. But these young people have come and started new ideas. I think it's a wonderful thing to try new things. And I'm running the trolley that night, but I told them we're not going to go the square that area. But I think, I think it's a wonderful thing that these young guys are thinking of new things because we don't want Iola to die. We want to be in the start of things. Well, Donna, if you're running the trolley, the drop-off point can be the party event. Yeah. Not for the high school kids. Oh, yeah. oh the trolley for prom kids. My bad. I missed that part. Wow. My, my bad. I thought it was for a different event. That's not really a problem. No, but going back to, like, the, I, I'm in support of stuff like this. But if we could scratch just that one. Okay. That's my only okay. suggestion. Okay. And... If if the vote is to pass this, we might leave the intersection up to the fire department and the police department get their input on it. Could close it similar to what we do for Farm City Days and have it to where it's almost like a diagonal in there to where they can turn yeah. and go down yeah. Jackson. Need to be able to at least the traffic yeah. still. That's what we've typically done during Farm City Days because Jefferson or Washington is closed then as well. I just have a couple of concerns. Um, we will have to do the resolution once I get a map from you. And remember that resolution has to go with those guys getting a request to serve beer. So they'll need that right away probably. Also, um, <clears throat> that will rule out the North Community Building for two reasons. One, you cannot sell alcohol in city, mm -hmm. the city building and you won't be able to, they won't be able to change locations, the permits for the location. <coughs> so just for that. And I have a little bit of concern as the finance director of the city with CITF money supporting an event like that since they've received donations for certain events. That's, that's just my concern because CITF doesn't have their own 401c3, it's audited as city money. That's my only concern about that. Um, I mean, I'm not saying they can't do it. I'm just saying since it's CITF money, the auditors will look at it as city money because they, we control their input output. Should we get our legal blessings on this? I mean, I can, I didn't realize that CITF was going to be the sole sponsor. I had understood that we were going to have other sponsors, but I don't know. There are others funding, yes. It isn't just CITF. And if I knew what that CITF funding. I mean, you don't want all these rules. I know. I just well, the, the no, alcohol has rules from thing. the state. Yeah. It's but not, I'm just saying it's not my rules. It's if just if you didn't have to use CITF for funding. 
I gave you sponsor twenty dollars. No. Organization as long as they're not expending money, they could be the sponsor of the event. It, it's just it has to do with the the funding coming out of city coffers. <coughs> we could get creative. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't have a problem with the alcohol. manage them within that partition and it cannot go outside of that. Yeah, it'll be basically the same setup uh, that we did during Farm City Days. We had a little Oktoberfest beer garden out there for those of you that saw traffic control, somebody checking IDs, doing the wristbands, all that stuff. So all the stuff that we need to do for that will be just the same. Other questions? <coughs> do we have a motion? Make a motion to support Iowa pop-up, whatever you name it, on April 23rd at 5 p.m. Second. I second the motion to support the Iowa prom pop-up, whatever you name it. All in favor, aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That's not a bad name for it. Motion carries. Thank you, Council. Thank you, guys. Scott Street rezoning. Good evening. The uh, Planning Commission uh, held a hearing on February 15th to hear, uh, review an application by Daniel Lauk. Uh, Ms. Lauk lives at 15 West Scott. Uh, what started this whole incident was is she was trying to refinance her property the bank needed something from me that said that she could rebuild that house if it was destroyed in fire or um, natural disaster it is a c2 zone according to our code it cannot be rebuilt in a c2 zone if it's longer than a year so she wanted to apply to the uh, Board of Zoning, or the, to the Planning Commission, to have her property rezoned from C2 to R2, which is two family. Uh, looking at that, city staff has no problem with it, but we would like to expand it from her property to other properties in that same area, leaving the properties that are adjacent to State Street as C2. Uh, if you look at the maps that I believe you were provided, oops, sorry, um, on there where it has the name Scott Street, her property would be the lot right below the TT in Scott. So Iola Auto Parts is the one trying to Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, her property is, like I said, the property the right below the TT in Scott there. We would like to go ahead and everything else that's color coded the same thing, which is the color code for R2, go ahead and make everything there R2 also, because we would, if somebody's house was damaged, we would like them to rebuild there. It is leaving the houses at directly adjacent to State Street, um, SE2, as you can see across on the east side of um, State Street there, everything in that first half block is all C2, and that, that's the same and consistent all the way up and down State Street there. So your, map, your map in there that Greg's got, it's got a little blue line highlighted yeah. around it. Mm -hmm. He's actually changed that color already to show the lots that uh, that would go to that. Yeah. That goes south even across Campbell. Correct. Yes. Because there yes. are a couple houses. And the one reason we didn't think about doing anything on Bruner, all those lots are owned by the city. They were flood buyout lots. It just yep. doesn't make any sense to change them. There's not going to be anything ever built on them anyhow. Yeah. So. so I do have a question. Why not change the ones that are on the street? Why not change the ones that are on State Street? Everything that's on a main thoroughfare through a city, a main artery, you want to leave that for business. All those houses were built prior to the city developing codes and the zoning was done. Um, but these particular houses, we want them to build back. Those houses on State Street, if they are damaged, as if they apply for a permit within a year, they can rebuild back, but they have to do it within a year. If they wait over a year, they cannot build them back according to our code. 
Mrs. Locke made the application. Have all the other landowners been notified? Yes, I've had I've had more, <laughs> I've had more people call me about this here rezoning than just about anything I've had done. And when I explained to them, I have had one one neighbor that's against it because if you're if you're in one of the properties that's being rezoned, it's a benefit for you. If it's your if your property is not one that's being changed, you're no different than you were, you know. Last year, so individuals that spoke in when we had the the last year. yes yes he is. Any further questions? Not going to have a motion. I'll move to approve ordinance thirty five zero five for the rezoning of the property at fifteen West Scott and surrounding residential properties from C two to R two. Motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Greg. Site plan review process. Uh, at that same public hearing, uh, the Planning Commission put a request from city staff to uh, change the, um, the text in our city code. Basically, we would like to take out the review of the site plan by the planning commission and the council the way it's always been done and is currently done myself along with corey and any other department head whether it be electric water gas or uh, fire we get together if i got any questions on that we make sure it meets our code um, then we, according to current code, we have to take it to the Planning Commission to get their approval. Then we have to bring it to the council to get your approval. All the checks, all the boxes have been checked off before it ever gets to the Planning Commission. All that stuff's been checked off before it ever gets to you guys. Um, plus, it, it's kind of a redundant system because we're never going to, I'm never going to approve a site plan that doesn't meet code. And if we ever go to approve a site plan, and for whatever reason the Planning Commission or the Council disapproved a site plan that meets our code, that could be a legal issue. So I've, I've bought site plans to you many times, and it always gets passed. But, yeah. This is similar practice elsewhere, too. Do what? Is this similar practice elsewhere? The just where city, uh, city admin and employees look at it and not council and the I guess yeah okay. the, the, the the abnormal thing is what we do is what we right do. now okay. yeah yeah especially coming to the planning commission and the city council already made <clears throat> code and greg is right it absolutely is a legal issue if it gets denied i feel like we need to micromanage everybody's jobs to yeah. make it well, and, Rest in your jobs. Why do we need to look at all this? And we should. And no matter what job you have, you should always look for continuous improvement and make things as efficient as possible. And there's no sense wasting your time making a decision that's already been made. It also delays the developer quite, quite a bit time-wise. Well, that's yeah. a big thing in that. I mean, it, to me, these are just unnecessary steps. So what kind of what kind of uh, decisions would this affect? Would this be like the change that we made out to the? Uh, well, here's a for instance, uh, T-Mobile brought in a site plan. I reviewed it. I got with every, whoever I needed to get with. I had to set it up for a, a review by the planning commission. It's a 60-day process. Though, we met. They looked at it. They said, yep, everything looks great. Then I have to wait the time, set it up for an agenda to come to the council, bring it to you guys, and you guys, yeah, hey, everything looks great. That can take a month and a half down the road before the the uh, contractor ever gets the okay to even start. And, and our our review process is thorough. It, it goes through every department head for every utility and and fire. So I I am very confident that we, you don't need to take the, these review steps, and we can just do it at the staff level. And I didn't know it was done like this until the <clears throat> T-Mobile thing happened. I think, as you all know, this is a me thing. This is my recommendation. I didn't see the need to go through it. Um, I didn't actually believe we had to do that until they showed it to me in the code. Uh, and then, and then I, I've been telling you all about it, even 
the previous council that I didn't think we need to go through these steps and I had some some legal issues with with it ever being denied so and Nick do you want to finish your question because I think I know what you're going to ask and it, I don't think it affects what you're thinking no I was just kind of curious what kind of decisions it was I was thinking it was something along the lines of what we had done out there with the hotel where we had the uh, change to the right of ways and things like that, that would be. That's now that stuff, so that still will come through the planning commission. That will still come to council. Rezoning, that type of stuff, still, I'm not changing any of that. It's just the site plan review. And, and on a bigger scale, if you take the um, science center and the elementary school, we don't mess around with those. We send those off to ICC and we pay a lot of money to have those reviewed by experts now we end up passing that back on to the school system or the developer but we make sure that it's reviewed by people that really go through it with a fine-tooth comb any further questions well I think this is a good idea <clears throat> I know when we revised our code several years ago this is probably just an oversight it's it's a standard practice to have site plans reviewed by staff and not come through planning commission and the planning commission does recommend this change as well yes yeah. on, on both the two issues and i should have mentioned that yeah. sorry about that uh we had five members there and all five of them voted unanimously to to remove it from the code so motion to approve ordinance 3506 removing the need for site plan approval for the planning commission and the council Motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. Council and administrator reports. <clears throat> you want to start today, Joelle? I don't have really anything to say except um, good luck to Allen Community College on the national playoffs that they're getting ready to embark on tomorrow. Yep, we play tomorrow. Yes. In yes. And good luck to the Kansas Jayhawks. It <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have as much impact. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that it, Kim? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> um, I hope everybody can get to some watch party, whether it's at the school or I know rookies and the country club are having a watch party tomorrow. Um, our men will play Wednesday. Just depends on how they do tomorrow night, uh, of what time they're going to play. Uh, other than that, I wanted to say happy one year to Matt. Thank you. You're having your first anniversary with us. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> you don't want do you me want singing. Us to sing? <laughs> That's it for me. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Over the weekend, I was. We had a phone call. Uh, one of our local businesses, big, did a freeze on their wages, and they, uh, for some reason, decided that their employees owes them at fifteen dollars for new hires and part of their production, sixteen fifty for the rest of their production. This may affect us down the road. We gave our employees a 6% increase for inflation, and inflation has gone way past that, and here these people are getting nothing. So it may affect us down the road. Um, I also want to thank the city for the snow removal. I think they did a really good job, and I know we all wish it had stayed colder for a lot longer <laughs> so that we could enjoy the removal efforts, but um, they did a really good job with that. Um, I, South Washington has this giant strip of pavement missing from it. And there were promises that when it got warmer, that that would get fixed. Is that it's got to be warmer than this? We got to be able to get hot mix from an asphalt company, uh, and that'd probably be Bettis or uh, Heckard or somebody that you know up towards the Lawrence area or depending on where they mobilize for the year. So it's going to be longer yet? <clears throat> yeah, it'll be, it, it'll, it, be it, it'll be late spring into summer. Okay, before we can get that one. Yeah. Um, I also want to say the Brazilian night at the college last week was really good. Um, the Allen County College has a nice little hidden restaurant in Iola. Um, if people want to try that, it's, they have good food there. English food next month. Uh, 
Did I say the 12th, the 11th? I don't remember what day I told you, Donna. It is. You'll let us know at the next meeting? It's the 12th. 12th. Worth a visit if you've never <laughs> eaten there. Earl? Nothing. Nick? Um, I had a couple of neighbors ask about uh, the uh, leaf sweeper um, over. And then the um, side street, I think it's Lincoln. There was a couple of pile-ups in the ditch and just kind of things getting clumpy there. Uh, I knew whenever I called in that it was down. I didn't know if it had been back up and working or yeah, it should be running. sweeping up. Yeah, uh, we're salt. sweeping now. And actually, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. I, I saw Corey writing it down. Yeah. We'll, we'll get it to staff tomorrow. That it, Nick? Corey and Matt? Uh, a couple things. Um, the, the next meeting we'll have, I promise we'll have the ARPA funds one. I think we've pushed that off two meetings now. Uh, so that one's on the agenda. We will talk about the 800000 in ARPA funds uh, and our recommendation for, for a, a sewer project there. And then hand in hand with that, uh, the, I think we'd mentioned the last meeting I was at of doing a, doing a utility a meeting or utility a month, basically kind of a sewer 101. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do that um, at that time too because there's a lot going on with sewer. We got the upper project, uh, and then we're, we're uh, re rehabbing the, the sewer camera. Again, as I told you all, that's not a regular camera. It's a, it, it's a, it's a beast. So uh, we're, we're going to have uh, Mitch here to talk about that and then kind of give you a sewer 101. Sewer is probably the easiest one we can talk about. Basically, water goes down the drain, and then it goes into the lagoons. It's not quite that simple, but it's really not much more complicated than that. Uh, but there will be a list of projects that um, we'll be looking at one, three, and five years down the road, uh, and I'll have that in my report this week. We have some lift stations that need to be rehabbed, and then we have some more zip lining we need to do, and we get it. And uh, for equipment, I jump it if I get this wrong. 2025, we're going to look at getting a new vac truck. Yeah, we're uh, slated to. That's yeah, yeah. We're we're putting a little bit of back because that's. I can't remember if that was a half million dollars. Half million, or? yeah. A, a good vac truck is going to be half a million bucks. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll have that. Mitch will be here for for that next uh, next meeting, and then um, a little precursor to Scott uh, Scott Shreve is planning on being there to talk about solar. Uh, those numbers have become much more favorable than the last time it was brought to your attention. Uh, so we will have him here, and we will try to have him explain it so we, we all can understand it. Uh, I've been working with Scott for a long time, EMG, and at times he can delve pretty hard into the, the costs and the acronyms and all that stuff. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have that discussion um, as well. That, that'll be a precursor. It won't be a act on it meeting, but I would mentioned to you all that the numbers were looking good. Well, we're to the point now where you all need to hear that from him as opposed to hearing it from me. So we will do that uh, all at the next meeting. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Matt. Or you have anything for us? Is that it? Anybody else? We need a motion to adjourn. I um, move to adjourn. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Who's opposed? Nay. There it is. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Do we need a